I'm going to do an exercise for Hong Kong Mahjong. I call the exercise random pulls. We're going to pull 13 or 14 random tiles and the purpose will be to practice finding scoring elements in those drawn tiles. If you're new to the game, look for a link in the video description below to this player reference so you can follow along. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls, one for each wind of the round, starting with East Round. I'm going to roll these dice to randomize which seat we're in. Player one, two, three, and four. I rolled a six, two, four, six. So we're going to be player two for the East pull. Our seat is south, wind of the round is east. Both of those variables could bring us a fawn, which is a scoring element. If you haven't already done so, look for a link in the video description below so you can download this player reference. In here are the scoring elements. We have a flower. This is a number four flower. We are in south seat, so we're not gonna get score for that. We'll get a replacement though. Five crack. So here we have a pung, three of a kind, or a pair and a potential chow, which is three in a sequence. Here's a potential chow, potential chow, and a pair. So right now we have two potential pungs, three potential chows, or actually this could be a potential chow. So we have a pair and one, two, three, four potential chows. Two, three, four, one, two, three, five, six, seven, two, three, four. Mixed suits. This would be a good chow hand. All chow is one fawn. If we were playing at a zero fawn table where you have no minimum point required, this would be a great hand to play. If we were playing at a table with a three fawn minimum, which is kind of standard, this would not work because that's only one fawn. We have a four flower, which we do not get score for. So we would need to come up with three fawn somewhere. We have a pair here and a pung here. We are in the south seat and we have a south wind. If I were playing at a table with a three fawn minimum, I think what I would probably do is hold the bams because there's a pung in there, a pung and a potential chow. Although with cracks, we have two potential chows. I would start, I think, by discarding the four dot. Because if we get more pairs, we could play all pung, which is all three of a kind. That would be three fawn. I would hold this in case we pair up because any pung of your seat wind or player two or south, that could give us a fawn. So I think I would try to gather bams if we pair up Pung and play all Pung, which is three fawn. So I'll, I would discard this first and just see what happens pick by pick. All Chow with a zero fawn minimum and then either a half flush with Bams or all Pung, which would be a stretch because we only have this to work with right now. That's pretty slim pickings right there. We need to pair up and pung. Okay, we're gonna go on to south pull. South. This time, let's say we're in north seat, since I rolled a four. So it's south round, we're in north seat. We're non-dealer, so I'll get 13 tiles.
two flowers, number two and number four. We're in north seat, so we're going to get a fawn for that number four flower. We'll get two replacements. So we have two pair threes and nines, mixed suits. We do have three single honors. Any three of a kind of a dragon, red, white, or green dragon, that could be score. I think what I might try here, if we're playing, let's say, a zero fawn table, I would probably go for what's called a chicken hand, where you can have any four sets in a pair, pung, chow, doesn't matter. So here we have a chow, two potential pungs, and then isolated tiles. So with a chicken hand, we still have work to do. We would need tiles for these, and we would need to pair up and pung these. I think I would play a chicken hand if this were a zero fawn table. If this is a three fawn table, I would probably push for all pung, all three of a kind. And I would hold this for potential score. Oh, south round, that can help too. So I would hold the south. So I would try to pair these up because those could both bring score. The west, not so much. Unless, yeah, no, that's what I would do. I was gonna say unless we play a half flush, but that would mean since this is what we have the most of for suits by one tile, we would have to throw away two pair. So I would not try a half flush. I would try for all pung, pair up and pung, which is gonna be a push because we only have two pair. One of the guidelines I've been told for all pung is to have four pair starting out or a pung and three pair, something, some kind of combination like that. Basically, you wanna be able to act on four blocks here, we can only act on two. Okay, we're going to go on to west round. This time, we're going to be player three. So that's going to be west. West round, and we're in west seat. For these tiles, I think I would try for either a half flush, which is one suit with winds and dragons, or a full flush, all one suit. Right now we have no flowers, so that's a fawn by itself. But if we play a half flush or a full flush, we'd have five discards. When I play, I kind of like to have four discards for whatever decision I make, so this is a bit lengthy. But here we have three potential blocks. Chow, 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 potential. So we would need more dots or pair up this north or draw in more honors for a half flush or more dots for a full flush. So I would discard these. Now if we were playing... That would be if we're playing with a three fawn minimum. If we're playing at a zero fawn table, I would play all chow. Here's pair. Here's a chow right there. One, two, three, four blocks. We would need another block in here. What we could do is use these two as potential chows. Instead of doing a four, five, six, we could split it out and do a two, three, four, or a one, two, three here. Maybe that would be better. One, two, three, four. All we need to do is pair up for an all chow hand, which is one fawn. So that would be okay for a zero fawn table or one fawn table. With no flowers, this would be two fawn. So that's what I would do if I were playing at a zero fawn table. One, two, three, three potential chows, a chow, and then we need to pair up. or 
half flush, full flush, if there's a three fawn minimum. Okay, we're gonna do the last one for north round, north pull. I rolled a five, so we're gonna be the dealer, seat one, also known as east. Two flowers. We're in seat one, and it is north round, so we'll get score for this one flower. That's our seat. For these tiles, mixed suits, this will be a bit of a challenge. If we're playing at a three fawn table, because we have these mixed suits, we have only one pair and our flower. That's one fawn. We need to come up with two more fawns somewhere. So I think what I would do is start by discarding the dots. Focus on bams and cracks. We do have two chows already in hand. If we go with cracks, we could really fill in and leverage these chow tiles. So that's what I would do if I were playing at a three fawn table. Probably cracks, maybe bams or pair up and pung, but we only have one pair, so that would be a long shot. If we were playing at a zero fawn table, I would do all chow. Let's see, here's a pair. You always got to have a pair. So we have one, two, three, four, two isolated tiles. One, two, three, four, five. So you need five blocks, chows or pungs. Here we have two chows and two potential chows and a pair. So all we need is a seven bam or a seven dot for an all chow hand. All chow and our flower would be two fawn. That would be totally fine at a zero fawn table. Hong Kong Mahjong is a lot of fun to play. It's a lot like Remy. You need four sets and a pair. The sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. Since there are four of every tile, you could also have a four of a kind. If you want to know more about the fundamentals of the game, look for a playlist in the video description below. And also don't forget to download this player reference. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.